Working class life is killing Americans. I'm Mark Harrison, and your Labor Minute is next. Ann Case and Agnes Deaton, both Princeton University economists, first wrote about America's deaths of despair five years ago, and at that time, concentrated their findings on the shocking data that showed white middle-aged Americans who were considered working class were dying younger than in previous times. In other words, the trend of well-off Americans living longer every year had been found to have reversed itself. Indeed, they were dying at younger and younger ages. Causes of death were being tied to increases in suicide rates, increases in alcohol and drug addiction, and obesity. But over the years, as the couple dug deeper and deeper into their findings, it became increasingly clear that the death rates were not only increasing for white America, but they were increasing for all races and colors of Americans with one thing in common, a lack of a college education. In fact, to describe their newest book, Deaths of Despair and the Future of Capitalism, in one line would be to say that the working class life in America is more difficult than it is in any other high-income country. Now, according to Case, in quote, European countries have faced the same kind of technological change we have, and they're not seeing the people killing themselves with guns or drugs or alcohol. Adding, there is something unique about the way the U.S. is handling this. Indeed, the black community has experienced a surge in deaths of despair in the last few years as well. And one of the problems, as the authors put it, is that life for many low- and middle-class income workers, no matter and regardless of race, no longer has a structure. Many of these workers no longer identify with a particular company or a brand. And because of the proliferation of subcontracting, people no longer know when they will be working or where. Schedules and locations can sometimes change on a weekly or even daily basis. Their lives lack stability and connection. For college graduates versus non-college graduates, marriage rates are lower. Attendance and identification with religious institutions are lower. Non-college degreed people experience and live with more chronic pains and ailments, and they drink more. And non-college graduates report that they are much more unhappy in overall terms than those who hold degrees. Now, all of these trends have increased markedly over the last decade and a half. When asked what can be done to reverse this alarming trend, Case and Deaton admit the answers will be difficult to accomplish. But they point to an overall of the medical system in our country, where priority could be the actual health of patients versus the wealth of those in charge. And they say that the federal government must do a better job in keeping big businesses from maximizing profits at the expense of workers by actively enforcing antitrust laws and encouraging new kinds of labor unions. And they feel that governments should do a better job of helping people earn four-year college and vocational degrees. Remember to visit us online at thelibernetwork.com and to follow us on all your favorite social media sites, including Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. And remember to listen to our podcast on Stitcher. I'm Mark Harrison with your Labor Minute.